the 2010 Fine Award for Teamwork Excellence in Healthcare. Silver winner. UPMC Presbyterian Shadyside. Venus Thromboembolism Prevention. If you have um, a patient that's lying in, be in bed, their blood tends to stay stagnant if they're not moving around enough. So what happens is that actually starts to clot and those clots can move around in your body. So you can end up with a blood clot in your arm, in your leg, in your lung, or in your brain. The surgical population has been covered by other guidelines and regulations and protocols. So it was time to look at the whole process and say, how do we do this for every single patient that walks into our, our hospital? We knew we needed people from the clinical bedside, but we knew that we also needed our pharmacy representative because medications are a big key part of prophylaxis. Mr. Smith? Yes. Hi, my name is Alexis. I'm Hi. one of the pharmacists here at the hospital. You'll be meeting with me prior to discharge to discuss one of the medications that you're being discharged on, and that's your Coumadin. We also needed the e-record group to be part of this. We know the Joint Commission have some very specific guidelines on what we need to provide to patients. They'd like each patient to have one form of prophylaxis in place by the admission day or day after admission. And that prevents that blood from pooling in your calf. So this will prevent the blood clot? You got it. So we want some type of flag in our electronic medical record that will come up every time. It's going to come up six hours after admission if the patient has neither order either for a pharmacological or a mechanical form of prophylaxis. He'll click directly on this continue button and what's going to open up for him are the VTE order set where he can document his contraindication if the patient is not in need of a form of prophylaxis or a mechanical or pharmacological form he can order directly from the order set. And when we first rolled it out, the physicians were concerned about the alert fatigue process, but now they actually love it because it allows them to place the order right at the time they get the alert. We need to make sure that on every discharge instruction set that goes home with the patient, we clearly have their follow-up physician, his phone number, when do they see him next, and their next PTI and our blood draw date. Okay, so let me get this straight. I call my doctor, I schedule an appointment with Dr. Yates with this number, and then on Tuesday and Thursday, I go and get my blood work drawn. Sure, you got it. Okay, thank you. Prior to this VTE protocol, we saw our compliance as being in the 80s to 83, 84 percentile. Since the protocol was initiated, we're in the 97 to 100 percentile on a consistent basis. So every time we can meet every one of those standards, we're preventing VTE from occurring with our patients. All right, Sam, well, good luck. Thank you. Hopefully we don't see you back here. Thanks, have a good day. You too.